Hi, this is Jim Christensen, and this is my presentation on calcium channel blockers. Uh, calcium channel blockers are a type of medication that can be used by practitioners in the emergency environment for the suppression of neurocomplex tachydithrhythmias and for hypertension. Uh, it also has a use outside of emergency medicine for the treatment of angina. Calcium channel blockers are broadly classified as a Vaughan Williams class 4. Uh, it isn't really important to understand the exact mechanism of how uh, a muscle contracts in order to understand how calcium channel blockers work. Uh, a simple understanding that if there's more calcium in the muscle, then the muscle will contract harder. And vice versa, if there's less calcium in the muscle, then the muscle will be more flaccid. Um, so this is probably the most important thing to get if you get nothing else is um, the role of calcium in the muscle. Um, if you have a more curiosity about how muscles contract, it's beat to death in your A&P textbook. Um, so the presence of calcium is required for the contraction of all types of muscle. Uh, so you have your three types of muscle. You have your skeletal, your cardiac, and your smooth muscle. Um, a calcium channel blockers essentially work on your smooth muscle and your, uh, your cardiac muscle. So as calcium presence goes up, so does the force of your contraction. Um, the role of calcium channel blockers is to limit the release of calcium into the, the, this, the muscle cell. Um, in therapeutic dosages, calcium channel blockers do not fully block the release of calcium into the cell, but limit the release according to how much of the drug is present. Uh, it's important to understand that calcium channel blockers do not block the muscles from contracting, but blunt the force of the contraction. So calcium channel blockers are primarily involved in uh, just a few different components of the heart. Uh, so in the, the heart muscle itself, the myocardium, uh, calcium channels are blocked resulting in less calcium in the muscle. And less calcium in the muscle uh, equals a weaker contraction. Um, and it's also involved in the SA and AV nodes. Um, since the SA and AV nodes both use a slow action potential, calcium is used quite a bit there. And uh, by blocking the calcium into these uh, SA and AV nodes, uh, essentially you're going to start getting a slower heart rate. And quite often that's what we're looking for. So that's uh, a pretty important role for uh, calcium channel blockers there. And also peripherally, um, it also plays a role in vasodilation. And this is the same principle as in the uh, a myocardium where um, it's used to relax the smooth muscle uh, by having less calcium inside the, uh, the muscle tissue. Hopefully you should have a pretty good understanding of the role of calcium in a muscle contraction. So it's important we now understand how it is released into the muscle and what calcium channel blockers do to limit this release. The primary source of calcium into the cell for the purpose of causing a contraction is the sarcoplastic reticulum. However unique to cardiac muscles is a calcium-rich interstitial fluid that bathes the muscle fibers. This interstitial fluid is released over a longer period of time, which is responsible for the longer contraction of the cardiac muscle. The difference is the primary reason why cardiac contraction is 10 to 15 times longer than a skeletal contraction. Calcium is released from these sites by calcium release channels. As you may have guessed, calcium channel blockers block calcium release channels, resulting in a reduced net outflow of calcium and preventing calcium from entering into the cell. It is important to understand the differences amongst calcium channel blockers. Although all calcium channel blockers have effects on vasodilation, the inotropic effects occur at varying degrees for each medication. Since verapamil, ditalizam, and adelat all belong to different families of calcium channel blockers, they all affect the cardiovascular system in varying degrees. Verapamil and ditalizam uh, both cause vasodilation and uh, SAAV nodal suppression. However, they also may cause reflex tachycardia through stimulation of the sympathetic system. This is a pretty unfortunate event since quite often they're being administered to treat tachycardias. Adelat, on the other hand, is pretty much used exclusively for its vasodilatory effects. Um, 
has very little effect on suppressing the SA and AV node uh, and unless it's quite outside its therapeutic range. Just to wrap things up, we need to discuss calcium channel blocker overdoses. Calcium channel blockers have a variety of treatment options, although none of these even come close to fully reversing the effect. Treatment options largely depend on the symptoms. Common symptoms for a calcium channel blocker overdose are hypotension, bradycardia, AV heart blocks, altered mentation, and dizziness. Transcutaneous pacing may be considered at any point in the treatment of bradycardia. However, due to the underlying cause of the bradycardia, the pacemaker may be unable to obtain mechanical capture. The first treatment option that should be considered is a fluid challenge of normal saline. An epinephrine infusion may be started with rates between 2 and 100 micrograms per minute. You may notice that this is 10 times the standard maximum dosing of epi. Treatment of the hypotension with a vasopressor is a priority in the treatment of a calcium channel blocker overdose. Secondly, an infusion of calcium chloride, 10%, with a dose of 8 to 16 milligrams per kilogram, given no faster than 100 milligrams per minute. If an effect is seen with calcium chloride, an infusion of 20 to 50 milligrams per kilogram per hour may be continued following the initial dose. Glucagon has been used with some success for the treatment of heart blocks and myocardial depression. Glucagon stimulates an increase in the heart rate through increasing intracellular concentrations of cyclic AMP. Atropine has mixed results. It can be used with some success in mild overdoses of calcium channel blockers. However, since the bradycardia is not vaguely induced, success is infrequent in severe overdoses. An important note is that patients should receive activated charcoal when they have ingested a slow-release preparation of their calcium channel blocker.